Good morning, and a very warm welcome to you all. Let us begin today's service with the singing of hymn number 399. Ye timid saints, fresh courage take, that clouds ye so much dread, are big with mercy and will break in blessings on your head. Hymn number 399. <laughs> The scriptural selection is from 2 Corinthians. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, an house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing, rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Let us have a few moments of silent prayer and then pray together the Lord's Prayer and I will follow with its spiritual interpretation as given in Science and Health. Let's pray. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. 
Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let us unite in singing hymn number 245. O tender loving shepherd, we long to follow thee, to follow where thou leadest, though rough the path may be. Through dark and heavy shadows, enshroud the way with gloom. We know that love will guide us and safely lead us home. Hymn number 245. The members of this church extend a loving welcome to those who are visiting us this morning. This church is a branch of the Mother Church, 
the first Church of Christ Scientists in Boston, Massachusetts, a church designed in the words of its founder, Mary Baker Eddy, to commemorate the word and works of our master, which should reinstate primitive Christianity and its lost element of healing. If you are visiting us and would like more information about Christian science, please contact one of the ushers. A Sunday school for children and teenagers meets every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Students are taught the scriptures and the healing truths of Christian science for use in their daily life. In our reading room located in this building, the Bible as well as the writings of Mary Baker Eddy and other Christian science literature may be studied, borrowed, or purchased. The reading room is open from 7.15 p.m. before our evening Wednesday evening meeting and is open one hour after the Sunday service on the last Sunday of the month. If you wish to the, visit the reading room at any other time, please contact an usher. You and your family and friends are invited to a talk sponsored by this church to take place this afternoon, April 3rd at 2 p.m. Lecturer Melanie Wahlberg will speak on the topic Never Alone, How Spiritual Ideas Work in Us. A webinar link was sent to you yesterday afternoon. Anyone who did not receive the link should contact the lecture chairman or the clerk of the church. This being the first Sunday of the month, I shall read from the Manual of the Mother Church by Mary Baker Eddy, Article 8, Section 1, A Rule for Motives and acts. Neither animosity nor mere personal attachment should impel the motives or acts of the members of the Mother Church. In science, divine love alone governs man, and a Christian scientist reflects the sweet amenities of love in rebuking sin, in true brotherliness, charitableness, and forgiveness. The members of this church should daily watch and pray to be delivered from all evil, from prophesying, judging, condemning, counseling, influencing, or being influenced erroneously. The words of our solo are from the discoverer and founder of Christian Science, Mary Baker Eddy. Heaven, 
whence joy supernal flow come from that love divinely Which chastens pride and earth born fear. Though God, who gave that word of might, which swelled creation's lay, let there be light. And there was light. What chased the clouds away? Twas love whose finger traced a loud of promise on the cloud. Thou to whose power our hope we give, free us from you strife fed by thy love divine we live for love alone is life and life most sweet as heart to heart speaks kindly when we and part speaks kindly, speaks kindly when we meet and part. Friends, the Bible and the Christian Science Textbook are our only preachers. We shall now read scriptural texts and their correlative passages from our denominational textbook. These comprise our sermon. The canonical writings, together with the word of our textbook, corroborating and explaining the Bible text in their spiritual import and application to all ages, past, present, and future constitute a sermon undivorced from truth, uncontaminated and unfettered by human hypotheses, and divinely authorized. The lesson sermon for today begins on page four of the Christian Science Quarterly. The subject, unreality. The golden text is from the International Children's Bible, Ecclesiastes. Many empty promises are like many foolish dreams. They mean nothing. You should honor God. The responsive reading is also from Ecclesiastes. What profit hath a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh. But the earth abideth forever. All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. 
and there is no new thing under the sun. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. And I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this also is vexation of spirit. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it that men should fear before him. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And God requireth that which is past. I said in mine heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. The following readings comprise our sermon. The Bible. Psalms. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Isaiah, Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small, and shall make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shitta tree, and the myrtle, and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree together that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord hath done this and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. And correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. The Science of Christianity comes with fan in hand to separate the chaff from the wheat. Science will declare God aright, and Christianity will demonstrate this declaration and its divine principle, making mankind better physically, morally, and spiritually. Science reverses the false testimony of the physical senses, and by this reversal, Mortals arrive at the fundamental facts of being. When examined in the light of divine science, mortals present more than is detected upon the surface, since inverted thoughts and erroneous beliefs must be counterfeits of truth. Thought is borrowed from a higher source than matter, and by reversal, errors serve as waymarks to the one mind in which all error disappears in celestial truth. Truth cannot be contaminated by error. The statement that truth is real necessarily includes the correlated statement that error 
truth's unlikeness is unreal. Nothing is real and eternal. Nothing is spirit, but God and his idea. Evil has no reality. It is neither person, place, nor thing, but is simply a belief, an illusion of material sense. Everything good or worthy, God made. Whatever is valueless or baneful, he did not make. Hence, it's unreality. Matthew. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. <clears throat> First Kings. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Kareth, that is, before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. <clears throat> so he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Kareth, that is, before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. As God is substance, and man is the divine image and likeness, man should wish for, and in reality has, only the substance of good, the substance of spirit, not matter. When being is understood, life will be recognized as neither material nor finite, but as infinite, as God, universal good, and the belief that life or mind was ever in a finite form or good and evil will be destroyed. Suffering, sinning, dying beliefs are unreal. When divine science is universally understood, they will have no power over man, for man is immortal and lives by divine authority. God gives the lesser idea of himself for a link to the higher, and in return, the higher always protects the lower. The rich in spirit help the poor in one grand brotherhood, all having the same principle or father. And blessed is that man who seeth his brother's need and supplieth it, seeking his own in another's good. Love giveth to the least spiritual idea might immortality and goodness, which shine through all as the blossom shines through the bud. All the varied expressions of God reflect health, holiness, immortality, infinite life, truth, and love. Whatever inspires with wisdom, truth, or love, be it song, sermon, or science, blesses the human family with crumbs of comfort from Christ's table, feeding the hungry and giving living waters to the thirsty. Isaiah, and the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Second Kings. Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphar, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. Then spake Elisha unto the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, 
Arise, and go thou in thine household, and sojourn wheresoever thou canst sojourn. For the Lord hath called for a famine, and it shall also come upon the land seven years. And the woman arose, and did after the saying of the man of God. And she went with her household, and sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. And it came to pass at the seven years' end that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines, and she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her land. And the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elisha hath done. And it came to pass, as he was telling the king how he had restored a dead body to life, that behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life cried to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers, and all the fruits of the field, since the day that she left the land, even until now. In divine science, man is sustained by God, the divine principle of being. It is impossible that man should lose aught that is real, when God is all and eternally his. Divine love always has met and always will meet every human need. Reason, rightly directed, serves to correct the errors of corporeal sense, but sin, sickness, and death will seem real even as the experiences of the sleeping dream seem real until the science of man's eternal harmony breaks their illusion with the unbroken reality of scientific being. Which of these two theories concerning man are you ready to accept? One is the mortal testimony, changing, dying, unreal. The other is the eternal and real evidence bearing true signet. It's lapped, piled high with immortal fruits. We cannot deny that life is self-sustained, and we should never deny the everlasting harmony of soul, simply because to the mortal senses there is seeming discord. It is our ignorance of God, the divine principle, which produces apparent discord, and the right understanding of Him restores harmony. Zechariah. Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. Luke. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, what a word is this! For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. The word was made flesh. Divine truth must be known by its effects on the body as well as on the mind before the science of being can be demonstrated. Hence its embodiment in the incarnate Jesus, that lifelink forming the connection through which the real reaches the unreal, soul rebukes sense, and truth destroys error. 
The notion that both evil and good are real is a delusion of material sense, which science annihilates. Evil is nothing, no thing, mind, nor power. As manifested by mankind, it stands for a lie, nothing claiming to be something, for lust, dishonesty, selfishness, envy, hypocrisy, slander, hate, theft, adultery, murder, dementia, insanity, inanity, devil, hell, with all the etc. that word includes. The arguments to be used in curing insanity are the same as in other diseases, namely the impossibility that matter, brain, can control or derange mind, can suffer or cause suffering. Also, the fact that truth and love will establish a healthy state, guide and govern mortal mind or the thought of the patient, and destroy all error, whether it is called dementia, hatred, or any other discord. As mind is immortal, the phrase mortal mind implies something untrue and therefore unreal. And as the phrase is used in teaching Christian science, it is meant to designate that which has no real existence. Evil is a negation because it is the absence of truth. It is nothing because it is the absence of something. It is unreal because it presupposes the absence of God, the omnipotent and omnipresent. Every mortal must learn that there is neither power nor reality in evil. Evil is self-assertive. It says, I am a real entity, overmastering good. This falsehood should strip evil of all pretensions. The only power of evil is to destroy itself. It can never destroy one iota of good. Psalms. God be merciful unto us and bless us, that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Matthew. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick. It has been said, and truly, that Christianity must be science, and science must be Christianity, else one or the other is false and useless, but neither is unimportant or untrue, and they are alike in demonstration. This proves the one to be identical with the other. Christianity, as Jesus taught it, was not a creed, nor a system of ceremonies, nor a special gift from a ritualistic Jehovah but it was the demonstration of divine love, casting out error and healing the sick, not merely in the name of Christ or truth, but in demonstration of truth, as must be the case in the cycles of divine light. One disease is no more real than another. All disease is the result of education, and disease can carry its ill effects no farther then mortal mind maps out the way. The human mind, not matter, is supposed to feel, suffer, enjoy. Hence, decided types of acute diseases are quite as ready to yield to truth as the less distinct type and chronic form of disease. Truth handles the most malignant contagion with perfect assurance. Become conscious for a single moment that life and intelligence are purely spiritual, neither in nor of matter, and the body will then utter no complaints. 
if suffering from a belief in sickness, you will find yourself suddenly well. Ecclesiastes. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. First Chronicles. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty, for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. If goodness and spirituality are real, evil and materiality are unreal and cannot be the outcome of an infinite God, good. There is no power apart from God. Omnipotence has all power, and to acknowledge any other power is to dishonor God. This text in the book of Ecclesiastes conveys the Christian science thought, especially when the word duty, which is not in the original, is omitted. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. In other words, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Love God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole of man in his image and likeness. Divine love is infinite. Therefore, all that really exists is in and of God and manifests his love.
Let's unite in singing hymn number 329. The heavens declare the glory of him who made all things. Each day repeats the story, each night its tribute brings. To earth's remotest border, his mighty power is known. In beauty, grandeur, order, his handiwork is shown. Hymn number 329. The scientific statement of being. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth, matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. And the correlative scripture from 1 John. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Now we have received the Spirit which is of God, 
that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Amen.